Okay, let's think about some practical um, or immediate things about the microbiota. One is the products we can buy or the things we can eat that might affect our microbiota. Let's, let's look at them and understand them. First, a probiotic. This is what people try to sell you. And a probiotic, a real probiotic, is a living, beneficial organism you eat. And um, if you're trying to fix your gut with probiotics, think of that, that as throwing seeds into a forest. You just don't know if they're going to grow or not. Um, and most probiotic bacteria die in the gut. Um, but some of them have, well, any real probiotic has a beneficial effect on us, and it has a real effect in the gut. And there's plenty of evidence that some bacteria that we eat can do good things for our digestion. The problem is that these products are not regulated by the FDA, and so there's no requirement that sellers verify their effectiveness. So really, where the, a lot of the people selling these products are lying is calling them probiotics because that implies that they're, they're beneficial when it, those people don't have any, any evidence that these bacteria are, are doing anything. So um, that's that. Some probiotics do improve our health, and it's not clear why, but um, some of them do improve our health, and it's not clear why. Prebiotics are something indigestible we eat that feeds the bacteria in our gut, and this is what leads to volatile fatty acids production, and this has a clear effect on human health. Um, so I think of this as really changing the growing conditions in the gut. It would be like increasing the sunlight and carbon dioxide for a forest. A lot of organisms would grow faster and better in those conditions. Some might not. Um, but yeah, if you eat a prebiotic, you are feeding the clostridia and bacteroides that you want to have growing in your gut. Um, and dietary fiber includes f um, types of carbohydrates that are prebiotics and types that are not. So there's that. Um, your gut bacteria probably are not that similar to your ancestors gut bacteria because your diet is probably very different from your ancestors diet indigenous humans have better microbiota that have evolved with them um, and so not only do they eat a lot of indigestible carbohydrates that feed the bacteria but they don't take a lot of antibiotics and they have individual strains um, that if we had those strains they would make us sick but those strains work together with those people's guts. And there's some, yeah, there's some evidence to think that once we switch to the Western diet where we eat a lot of um, easily digested carbohydrates and we kind of starve our microbiota, our individualized strains went extinct a long time ago and we don't know how to get them back. Even eating prebiotics to feed them can't bring them back because they're not there to eat the prebiotics. So there is some evidence that we have irreparably damaged our microbiota by adopting the Western diet. Um, yeah, and, and if you think back to where I said there are strain-specific effects of the microbiota, that's what we're missing. That's what we're losing. Um, fermenting carbohydrates to make volatile fatty acids, that's not a strain-specific thing. Lots of different species, lots of genera, multiple families of bacteria can do that. But the other things that we don't know as well, we know can be strain-specific. So what do microbiology nerds do differently now that we know about the microbiota? Like, how do, how do we all eat? I have polled some of my colleagues, and here's what we found. One, um, microbiologists who give birth via cesarean section um, take very seriously the idea of seeding the newborn with um, the microbiota they would have gotten during vaginal birth. Um, so a baby born uh, vaginally is exposed to the perineal microbiota and the vaginal microbiota, and that's their gut is colonized right away by that. Um, so we take that seriously. Um, we take fecal microbiota transplants seriously. 
that is, to our knowledge, the best way to fix a very dysbiotic gut microbiota. And we do think about basically prebiotics. We feed our microbiota when we choose which ve vegetables we eat. And we typically don't buy probiotics. Um, we don't think any, any of them are miraculous. Uh, fecal microbiota transplants are sometimes used in, in medicine. We could think of them as digging up a forest and putting it in another forest. It's a huge, huge change to the microbiota to have a thousand species from another person put into it. Um, this would be used as a last resort when someone has chronic C. diff or chronic colitis and there's no other treatment. Um, and we could think about like the ideal donor is someone with a similar microbiota. So someone who lives in your house has a similar microbiota to yours, especially if you eat similar food. Um, but you've got to remember there are viruses, there are dangerous bacteria and fungi, there are protists in the gut, and you have to make sure if you're donating bacteria to another person, you're not also donating a virus that you have fought off, but they haven't. You don't want to give a sick person lots of new pathogens. Um, so, um, Typically what's done is the person would take a lot of antibiotics that clear a lot of the bacteria from as much as possible from their gut, and then using some kind of an enema-like process, they surgically implant the new microbiota and hope it works. And they, they, would, they do a lot of wash steps to make sure the only thing they're transferring are the microorganisms. Okay, that's, um, that's enough about the gut. Let's talk about the vagina.